So I'm standing here at the entrance of El Rodeo, which is one of the hardest hit communities by this volcanic eruption. No one lives here anymore. It's just families that are looking for survivors and loved ones. Even at the, after nine months uh, that have passed by of this eruption, there's still total devastation uh, in this community. Here are the chairs after Sunday morning service, untouched. They came in here for shelter and the ash just came through. Once, a small little village in Guatemala has come, turned to a pile of rubble in just a matter of few hours. As I keep walking down this street here, essentially a makeshift street, you can see behind me just the incredible devastation and the emotion of this place is it's just completely overwhelming. Even a month after the event took place, the heat from the ash was still so uh, hot that it would melt shoes while people were still desperate to find any survivors. I just cannot imagine how they run and escape uh, for the ashes and how the people inside the houses got born as well. people couldn't run because the ashes were so fast uh, the people that survived this why it was really a miracle stories came to my mind you know and and we just uh, need to pray because for us that we didn't be here it's still painful and it's still being a big shock can you imagine the people that that really um, survived to that uh, tragedy? Uh, they are still recovering. We need to pray for them. So I'm standing in a home, or what was once a home. Obviously, this was an entrance. There was a a gate. Uh, probably the entrance to this home and you can see the, the lava and how high the lava was at this stage. Let's take a look at this. And this is what people were essentially trying to flee and escape.
to to feel like an oven inside the house. And they started to pray and the pastor said, let's pray, let's ask God for help. And uh, it was a pregnant woman inside. And that pregnant woman called the husband and say, I just wanna say goodbye because we are dying here. And the husband said, I'm going to pick you up. I'm going to rescue. And she said, don't come please. You are gonna die with us. And he said, I prefer to die with you than to stay alive without you. And he brought some army guys and they ran to the, uh, to the pastor house and they opened the roof. But uh, the husband of this lady was expecting just find his wife. And he was surprised to find 32 people inside. But when they came out, because the ashes and everything, it was dark, they didn't know where to go. And they were very hot, you know, very exhausted. And the pastor said, let's pray, because we don't know where to go. And everybody prayed, and immediately they said that rain started to, uh, to, to came over them. And that refreshed them, and they could breathe. And they said, God, where can we go? Where we can uh, go? And then they saw a little path uh, and they knew God is showing us this path. And they started to walk, but they started to see people dead and people melted, asking for help. And they just uh, walked because they couldn't rescue them. It was the lava. But just the path where they were walking it was clean and they walked for 40 minutes in that path. And then they found the line with the firemen, the ambulance, and they knew God guided us here. But just those three, 32 people survived that they looking for the pastor's house and they pray and it was a miracle, you know? We are visiting the families that are suffering, still suffering because of the tragedy of the volcano. And we are here with, the, with some of them and they are asking us for prayers because like mother, she said she's suffering so much to see uh, her uh, children, her uh, Family suffering of the burns of the of the lava when they when they got uh, damaged for the tragedy, and she said it's so painful for her to see them uh, suffering this way. And she's asking for prayers, for the strength for her and also for all her family because it's very hard to go through this time. And she's asking all the church and the believers, please keep us on prayer. And it just tells you the overwhelming magnitude of the lives that were impacted here. Many people lost their lives and have been relocated in the various communities around here. And so we need help. We need uh, for you to partner with us to come and to help the people of this community that are still alive.